In the tumultuous years following the United States Civil War, the federal government was faced with two conflicting challenges. Reincorporate the 11 states that had seceded from the Union and define and implement a strategy for ensuring the economic, political and social rights of newly freed black Americans. Radical Republicans, with support from the United States Army and the Freedmen's Bureau, led the effort to pass and implement laws that ensured first-class citizenship for blacks. The 14th Amendment to the Constitution in 1868 affirmed that black Americans were citizens of the United States and entitled to due process and equal protection under the law. The 15th Amendment in 1870 stated that the right of citizens to vote shall not be denied on account of race, colour or previous condition of servitude. Conservative white Southerners and their northern allies in the Democratic Party opposed all efforts to extend human rights to blacks. By 1877, the white Southerners who wanted blacks re-enslaved had won. The new slavery was Jim Crow segregation. The re-enslavement of blacks during the Jim Crow period hinged in large part on denying blacks the right to vote. White primaries permitted only white citizens to vote. Poll taxes were used to keep poor people from voting. Blacks who tried to vote were routinely intimidated. Sometimes the intimidation meant having your name placed in the town's newspaper. This was done so that the white people in town knew the identities of troublemakers. If your employer saw your name, you were fired. African-Americans who tried to vote were sometimes beaten by police officers and incarcerated in local jails. In some cases, a black person was physically assaulted because one of their relatives tried to vote. And when African-Americans were brave enough to register to vote and lucky enough to get to vote, they sometimes received tissue paper ballots made of thin paper and discarded before the votes were counted. Literacy tests were also used to keep African-Americans from voting. Grandfather clauses exempted those persons with an ancestor who had voted before 1867. This kept poor and illiterate whites in the voting pool. These tests were not really designed to test civic knowledge or basic literacy. Some of the literacy tests were unnecessarily difficult. For example, a would-be voter might be asked to recite the entire Declaration of Independence or the entire United States Constitution from memory. Such tasks were assigned at the whim of the registration official. Even if the applicant recited the document correctly, they might be told that they had failed the test. Please remember that during the Jim Crow period, blacks could not argue with whites. Therefore, the black person taking the literacy test could not dispute the claims of the white person serving as the registration official. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 effectively abolished the use of literacy tests. 